My name is John, welcome to another Banggood Tool Review. This time I'm going to be reviewing two AR32 colour blocks, a square block and a hexi block. Before I get started I want to make one or two things perfectly clear. The first thing is Banggood do make these, Banggood import them from China and sell them worldwide. The second thing is Banggood have given me these completely free of charge to do with whatever I want. I'll probably end up giving them away. The other thing is, I do get a very small commission for each one of these that are sold. It's not going to make us a millionaire, I'll never retire, but it will help us to run the shop and make more videos. Anyway, as long as you understand how things are, because everything's straight up with me, what you see is what you get, uh, let's have a start and see what we can, see what we can do with these. Right, these are the blocks, let's have a look and see what they the actually get. Obviously that's a square one. And that's a hexagonal one. I will show you what you do with them or how they use a little bit later on. The first thing I want to do is do some measuring and see how accurately made they are. At first glance they look good, they're all ground. Nice threads. Grounding the taper as well. I made my own and I had a hell of a job getting that taper right. Uh, these obviously do not the CNC grain I would think so they should be they should be right. Same with the hexagonal one. It's important they've got a, a hole through the back, a big hole, which means it can get a bit of stock through the same size as the biggest AR thirty two collet which I think is 19mm in the standard set anyway. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the block's actually square. So we'll lie it down. Right, that's the first thing I've noticed that I don't really like. The nut's actually bigger than the block. I made the block remain bigger than the nut so you could put a, a clamp on it and just hold it down. Not really a problem because this is normally held in the vase so you could put a, a parallel underneath there. Okay, so we'll take the nut off. We'll do each face and turn. Zero. 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 Possibly a funny's hair on that one. But basically, that all showing zero. Which means that the block is square. I'll do the hex block as well just to compare. I'm going to peel that the same size as well. I think they're 40mm square. Right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all reasonably the same size, or they are all the same size. Right, the next thing we need to measure is to make sure the hole's in the centre. If the hole's not in the centre, these are totally useless. So I'll put a collet in there, I'll put something in that I know is round and true, and we'll do the same test again. Simple as that. Right, we'll do the square block first. You need to make sure that there's no, no dirt or bits of swarf cut in there because that'll put the accuracy tool along with out. These are also, they're not bang good collets but they're, they're cheap collets, they're not expensive collets. Right, so that snaps into there, nice and clean in there, that screws on. I've got a ground shaft here, it's a new little shaft out of a car gearbox, it's dead straight and ground and ideal for a test piece like this. I'll just put tighten it by hand for the minute just to see what sort of quick results we're going to get. Once again, I've got the problem with that nut touching the table. It's not really a problem, it's just a, a design feature that I would have made that bigger. But that's the way it is, so we'll just have to use what we've got. Right, we're going to rest it on there. That's just a bit of nice ground material. I don't know where it come from or what it's for, but it's, that's just what it is. Right, so next we can measure the Turn each one and turn and make sure we get the same the same result on each one. Right, 
thing is, you've got to make sure you go on the centre of the obviously the centre of the round bar. There should be a little ball in here. There, yeah, there is. Right. First one, so we'll find a high point, which is about there. We'll set a zero. Right, that's the high point there, so if we set a zero next one possibly a thou different next one zero next one that's zero as well. So the worst one is a thou down, which is not a not a great lot really. We'll do exactly the same test on the on the hexi blocks. He's picking the same zero up, so he's at the, at the same height. Right, so we've got zero on one face. Zero. That one's a f possibly a funny's higher. Right, I must admit they're a lot they're a lot better than I thought they would have been. I had a hell of a job getting mine as accurate as that and I don't think mine are as accurate as that to tell you the truth. Right now I'll set one up in a vase and I'll basically show you what they're used for or what you can use them for. Right, I'll do a demonstration of one of the possible uses of a, a collet block like this. Use a square one because it just happens to be handy. Take that into the vase. Make sure it is all the way down, lying nice and flat. A piece of bar here, I'm not quite sure what it is, other than it's a piece of round bar. Right, that gets tightened in. All I'm going to do is machine a square on the end of here. That's also a bang good cut that's in there, one of those carbide ones. Right, this bit here, all that is is a stop. It's a, a stop I made for the vase, which means I can put that up against the collet, and every time I loosen off, the collar to turn it round, I bring it up to touch that stop and it'll be in exactly the same position. Right, we'll start the machine up. Quite a decent cut. Stop the machine, it pays it to stop, but it's not worth trying to do it with a, a cut or rotating with your hands in the other wood. You're only going to get your, your finger stuck on the other ones. Right round to the next square. Now that, we get, that goes up against the stop like that. Make sure it's down.
Then in the last one. Okay, so that's put a square on the end of a, a round shaft. You could loosen that off now and split the difference and put eight flats onto it. Obviously you can use a hexi block to do three or six. Now I've got to ask myself, would I buy those colour blocks using my shop? Absolutely. Um, you've seen how I measured them, that accurate, that well in a thousandth of an inch uh, on all six or all four sides. I did a quick demonstration of how they used um, without a doubt I would definitely buy them. I'll put a link in the description box on the video. If you click the link it'll take you to the page where they sell these things. If you buy one, don't forget, I don't get a, a small commission. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting.